Hi guys, it's Weeded, and today I am doing a very quick and easy um, oil painting. I'm doing this on oil paper, uh, nice cheap substrate. This is just a very simple painting, beginner level. You can do this in acrylic too. I just felt like playing with oil today. I'm using a paper palette. I just rip off a piece and attach it to a clipboard. And when I'm working with oil, I find that this disposable palette is just really super easy and of course it's inexpensive since I'm just using a clipboard. The oil colors that I'm using are Oleo HD and there this is Green Dragon. It's kind of a warm green. These oil paints are or were designed to mimic the colors we see in HD and this is Lucky Green which is a slightly darker, cooler green. It really doesn't even matter what colors of green you get. You just, this is a final green reset and it's a little bit darker. But these were designed, these oil colors were designed to try and get new painters into oils. But if you're doing this in any other oils or acrylics, this is Avatar Blue, you simply need three colors of green, a light, medium, and dark. You need a medium to dark blue. Um, and again, it really doesn't, it doesn't matter exactly what you use. This is Game Over Purple, which is really, looks like, I think I looked up the pigment and it was dioxazine purple. And then I use a magenta color. And I use a later on, Here's the um, Flash Magenta, which is fluorescent. Later on, I do use some white that has some iridescence in it. I really didn't want, or pearlescence in it. I really didn't want that, but that's all I had. So again, you use whatever you have. Three greens, a medium, a kind of a light medium, and then a dark and a kind of medium dark blue, purple, and magenta, and a white. Um, and here I'm mixing the dark blue and the dark uh, green together. And you only need two brushes. I use three, but you could do this with two. One with just something to get the paint on the canvas. Now I'm using that dark mixture. Um, down at the bottom and now I'm lightening it up just a little bit but basically you want the darker color at the bottom and the lighter color at the top and I decide that um, as I'm doing this it's really kind of peacock colors so it, it's it doesn't show and I'm going to apologize for the glare I do realize that and end up turning a light off shortly but there will be a very bad glare but the dark colors are going towards the bottom and I start lightening them up lightening the colors as I go forward or go up on the page and then there's going to be one area that I really kind of highlight um, so there I'm taking that darker color and I'm mixing in my medium green again to kind of lighten as I go towards the top of the page and it really I'm using an X stroke to do this just that seems to give better coverage and now you can see I'm picking up that lightest screen because I'm working now sort of in that highlight area and I apologize because there's a glare right where I'm working but that is going to be the lightest spot in my canvas and that's going to be sort of the highlight and the focal point. Um, it's purple flowers on this vine and and there I tilt it so you can see just a little bit better and it's um, that's where the biggest flower is going to be really and the vine's going to kind of curl towards that that light area. So I'm keeping it a little darker on that side, but still lighter than it was below. 
and this is why it really doesn't matter which which greens you pick you can definitely tell that one of those is a warm green and just about everything else is cool but it still works because we're mixing all of the colors together and that glare is just horrible um, my studio is not set up and there I'm trying to show you the colors is not set up to show you how to actually paint because normally when I'm painting I'm working upright on an easel and I didn't have my tripod I couldn't set it up and there you can see through my glasses I'm terribly blind and I'm just going in and playing with it and blending until I'm happy with what I've got and I think yeah and that's what I'm trying to show you but I don't like the the way that looks just a blob of light color so I'm working around it though it doesn't really matter because this painting is really about layers and those layers are you just put layer on top of layer so nothing has to be precise and you're going to be going over and over these areas so if you don't like exactly what you've done don't worry about it it's going to be covered up okay um, the other two brushes that I use other than the one just to get the paint on are fan brushes and the whole thing is done with fan brushes I start off with a larger stiffer and here you can see I'm trying to adjust some lights to get rid of the glare and there we go I got rid of some of it anyway um, but I use fan brushes use whatever brush you want the first fan brush is fairly big and somewhat stiff the second fan brush that I use is smaller and softer but you could do this with one fan brush very very easily and I even paint the flowers with the fan brush which probably is a bit of a pain if you've got a filbert or a bright or something you know some other brush that you're comfortable with you know, paint with whatever you like I use the fan brush because it gives that look of leaves and it kind of does the work for me so and now I'm just cleaning off my um, background brush and we won't be using that one again so I love the colors in these and I seem to have a thing about having a green background and purple flowers but and here we go and that's a fairly stiff fan brush and I'm going into that mix of the darkest green and the blue and then I'm see how I'm dabbing and I'm ro rolling the fan brush as I've, I'm doing it and I'm going to do that all over and you really can't tell what it's looking like at first but when we cover up this entire painting it gives the look of foliage and now I'm going a little bit lighter but not terribly and again we're even going to go over these so that um, again it's, it's about layers in this particular painting but I just keep dabbing in and getting whatever stands out a little bit against that background and here I'm trying to show you exactly what I'm doing I'm taking yeah I'm taking it and I'm just dabbing around and I'm trying to it gives it leaves impressions in the paint and you're also depositing paint and making those leaf shapes so we're just gonna make foliage all the way through and it's random there's no rhyme or reason um, to what I'm doing here except I'm trying to set down some dark dark leaves in the background we're going to go on top of this with lighter leaves and that's when I use a smaller slightly softer 
fan brush, but I could have just as easily used um, the one I'm using now. Use whatever you have on hand. If you don't have a fan brush, you can get, it won't be quite the same look, but if you use a bright in this manner, and a bright is just a brush that has uh, the, the tips of the bristles come to a flat point, um, you'll get a different look, but you can still make that kind of leafy shape with it. And that's an up close. And you don't want the leaves to be all the same color. You don't want them all going in the same direction. Um, so just move your brush around and add different colors. Some leaves will be small, some will be big. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I am making the leaves fairly big on this bottom layer. I will make them smaller on the next layer. Um, I won't come around quite as much in some places. And now as I'm going up, I'm staying fairly dark, but you see me mixing in more of that middle green. And that's because we're moving towards the top, which is basically towards the light. And I'm sort of avoiding that really light area for the moment, um, but I will go in shortly and, and put some foliage there too. This was a very relaxing painting because uh, it's no stress really. You just keep dabbing and going and it's like there's pretty much just a couple strokes that you need to complete this whole painting. Now I'm, I am going into that light area and I've lightened up my foliage just a little bit because I don't want anything really, really dark in there. I want to keep that area as a focal point. So while it's got to have some foliage and I've got to put some darker colors in there, um, I still need to keep it lighter than the rest of the painting. Okay. And now I'm looking at it trying to determine if I need to go in anywhere, if I want to. And there's no right or wrong. Um, I use, I'm using um, turpenoid there to clean my brush. You can use odorless mineral spirits. You can use water miscible oil paints if you don't like to use the solvents. And again, this painting could so easily be done in, um, in acrylics because even though I'm going wet on wet with the oils, it's not, it, it, it's not, um, I'm not really taking advantage of the fact that there's wet oil paint underneath. So this could be done in acrylics very easily. I may try it in acrylics actually. And now I'm trying to pick, I've got several fan brushes because I do like the looks that they give. And I'm looking and see this one, it's fanned out a little bit more, but the bristles are soft and it's actually a little smaller. And I'm going to make and you'll see me try to figure out where where do I want my flowers. I've gone into the purple and now there I'm showing how I want my vine to go. Um, and I'm just, I'm trying to figure out where I want my flowers. And I, it ended up that my flowers all pointed kind of in the same direction, which was totally not my intention. So but I'm roughing it in. This is just the base layer and that's that's all it is. We're putting in the purple and you can hardly tell that it's purple because it's so dark. But yeah, so it's just a blob. 
it's just a blob with a little bit of a point on one end flared on the other and I want to put in five flowers odd elements are generally more appealing and there I'm putting that so it tilts it up and gets a little bit more of the glare off of it but and that's actually a I think a microwave tray that I will often put over my oil paints to if I'm not going to finish a painting at the the same day so I just slip that over it and come back the next day to work on it and there's another little flower now I'm making that one that tiny one vary the sizes of your flowers uh, make some little buds make some big open flowers um, and have the uh, if I redo this, I wouldn't have all my flowers pointing in the same direction. That so was not my intention. Um, but there I go. And I was thinking that was going to be an upside down flower and then I ended up changing it. But the shape of the flower is really not that critical right here. Because again, this is just a base. and. So that flower was meant to be upside down, and I'm pretty sure that I made it. Ah, I made it right side up. But as I was saying about the number of elements, odd elements are more pleasing, and uh, so I'm going to put in five flowers, and that's going to be again. I'm all, I was trying to do bigger flowers towards the bottom, the older growth, and smaller towards the top and my vine is going to come in and curl up and around and so I'm having my flowers follow that. See that flower is meant to be a lot bigger and it's also meant to point out to the, the right and again I think I end up with it pointing up. Yeah, yeah I did. Ended up changing the direction of all these flowers that I carefully thought out. So there are my five flowers. And of course they don't stand out very much right now, but we're going to fix that. So I'm cleaning off my brush. Because I don't need the purple on, on it for this step. And that means I just go into a little turpenoid and then I start wiping off on a paper towel until it starts wiping clean. Okay, so I'm using the same brush that I did for the flowers. And I'm going in with a lighter foliage now. See? So we're going to put another layer. And I'm not necessarily avoiding the flowers. I'm going to kind of work sort of around them. But, and my leaves are a little smaller. That's what I was trying to show you. And, yeah, <laughs> I need more of that middle green color. And before I had mixed the dark green with the blue to get my, my leaves, and now because I want another layer that's lighter, I'm going more with that middle green color so it will stand out. And see there, I kind of go over my flower. I'm okay with that. That helps give it some depth. And it's just the same stroke, only just a little bit smaller strokes. And I put a little bit of that lighter green and darker green. And this is not even our last layer of foliage. We're going to do um, sort of a little bit more. But I go back and forth between working on the flowers, and see there I definitely cut into that, that flower. And right now, 
I'm kind of working on my vine. If you'll notice, I'm sort of following, and I'm following my flowers. So I am working on developing that vine that's going to be a little bit lighter. Dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. More dabbing. And this is really close to the color that is in the background, so I lighten it up. And put some more in. With that light color. And you can, you can kind of see that leafy shape coming out, going over the flower. And I'm coming back with that light green and I'm highlighting that vine to even just a little bit more. And you put as many leaves in as you need. And you put as much in as you need until you, you like it. This is just sort of an abstract floral vine. And I was truthfully inspired by um, Helen Wilkes who was a painter of, and I apologize for the traffic, but who was a painter of summer now on the West Coast um, years ago when she was still alive. And she did a painting and gave it to me. And it was basically, it was not like this, but it was sort of an abstract vine with flowers in it and I changed it up. This is not the same as her painting, but that's where the inspiration came from. And now you see me just going in with more foliage, and I'm trying to define that vine just a little bit more, and I felt like I needed some of the darker, some of the darker had gotten obliterated a little bit, so I felt like it needed a little bit more. And that's kind of the nice thing. You can go in and add more. And if you've done something you don't like, you can paint over it. Doesn't matter if you're working in oils or acrylics. Um, it's like you can always fix it. So I have my vine fairly well defined at this point, but those flowers are going to need some work. So, and again, I could sit there and fill with, with the painting as you see me doing. Forever. And at some point you just have to say, okay, I'm done. I'm done. It's sort of like when you're writing, you can refine and refine and refine what you're writing, but you eventually have to reach a point where you admit, okay, I'm done. This is good. I don't need to do any more. Throughout all of this, I'm still trying to keep the foliage at the bottom a little bit darker than the foliage at the top, even on my vine. I want my vine to stand out, but I still want and still want it to to I want my vine to stand out, but I still want it darker at the bottom than I do at the top. And my wildly curly hair is getting in the way. That means I probably have it pulled up on top of my head. If I don't remember to put a clip in it before I come over here, then I usually just stick it up with a paintbrush, which is fine, except when your husband comes by and takes you to lunch and never bothers to remind you you have a paintbrush sticking out of your hair. So you're sitting in the restaurant 
eating and people are looking at you and you finally realize, wow, okay, paintbrush is in my hair. And it's like, well, honey, couldn't you have reminded me that, or, you know, let me know that, and he's like, I'm so used to it, I didn't even think about it. Okay, I'm showing you that I'm using the same brush and now I need to work on those flowers. I've got my vine defined, but I want to do a little work on the flowers. So I try this, and this puts, um, you really can't see it, but it does give it a little red, and I keep going and I'm going to lighten it a little more for the next flower, but and I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. And here's why I end up changing the direction of the, the flowers, and they all end up going in one direction. But there I'm putting in the red or I should say the magenta and I apologize for my head getting in the way and see I'm just dabbing it in I, I'm really not even too worried about the shape or what I'm, I'm doing I'm just trying to get some color in because I've got to, to brighten them up and that purple was just a base color. Now if you don't want to use magenta just go in with a white and lighten the purple up and put in different shades of purple. Uh, you don't have to use the magenta. And you'll find that I do that in just a, little, um, just a little bit. I do come in with some white and add it to the purple. And I actually add it to the green. And it is pearlescent, though it doesn't really show up that much in the painting. Um, and regular white is just fine. That's actually what I wish I had had, what, what I wish I was using. But that's not what I had, so I used what I had. Now I'm going into striped magenta and dabbing it on the flowers to brighten them up more. And you can see now how I kind of changed the shape so that all my flowers are sort of going to be going in the same, pointing in the same direction. Totally not my intention originally. So I, I lost my vision on my flowers. However, it does still work. Okay. Now, they don't really look like flowers, they look like blobs of paint, that's okay. One of the advantages to not working flat and to having it up on an easel is you can get away from it and see it so much better. Um, and I really like that, so it's hard for me to work flat like this. I'm going to try to figure out a way to get it set up so that I've got that easel. And I went in and added a little bit of dark in between some of the magenta. And Oleo has a just a plain clear oil and I was looking at that but it wasn't what I needed so I went with Moon White which again has a little bit of pearlescence and I'm going to use that to brighten up my flowers I'm going into the purple picking up some of the white just mixing it right there on the palette I don't care if it's mixed up that well or not. If it's splotchy, it will just give a little more interest. And I'm just kind of dabbing in the center. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just, I'm dabbing. I'm not brushing, really. It's just barely touching the brush to the palette and lifting off again.
And there I just want to add a highlight. And so I added a highlight to the bud. And then I'm, I'm going back into the center. Just dabbing on a little bit of color. And then when you back away, these end up looking like flowers. But I find, and see, I keep playing. And you can, you can keep playing and adding until you have your flowers the way you like. I felt like I lost too much of the, the purple. So notice I'm going in and I'm putting the purple in. That darker color because I didn't want to lose my darks as much as I did. And I'm sort of shaping the flower up just a little bit with that. So it's just dab, dab, dab on the flowers. I'm going to go in and use that. Um, there I'm scribbling off some of the paint. I'm going to go in and use that moon white again. But I'm going to use it with the green. And I'm going to brighten up the foliage even more. Yeah. And I'm going into my lightest and I'm mixing a very light green again, very roughly. I'm not not really mixing it thoroughly. That way if I get some odd colors, I get some odd colors. And this really brings out the vine. And when I do this, this really bright, I try to have it sort of frame my my flowers. Now I put it in a couple other places but I really want it to highlight those flowers. I want it to show that my vine, exactly where my vine is, I don't want it to get lost in the background. And this makes the painting really pop more than anything else. So I don't want to get too carried away with it. But I love, I love what it did to bring out the vine. And see, there's where I'm going in, trying to make it frame. Frame the flowers. And I'm a little bit more sparing with it down towards the bottom. Though I do put some in, I'm just, I just want to be a little more spar sparing with it and I don't I don't keep picking up more, I just sort of keep working and so it's still brighter at the top, but there's a little hint of it at the bottom too. Just not as much. And there I'm toning it down, because again I don't want it to, to overshadow. It still needs to be darker at the bottom. And that's how I turned all my flowers going in one direction, basically following the vine. And um, whatever. Maybe those vine flowers do grow like that. Who am I to say? And that's pretty much it. Easy, simple. It'll take if... Um, I didn't use much, uh, I don't think I used any oil on this as far as sunflower or linseed or anything, but it still took a while for this to dry. 
so if you're doing it in oil be sure to set it aside somewhere and I put this on an easel and just let it dry now one thing the tape should come off cleanly it really doesn't it's going to rip in some place but the nice thing about working on paper like this is that you can use a photograph frame super easily so it's really easy to find a frame to fit your paintings and I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you try this it's it's a fun easy quick painting to do and it I think it looks great and interpret it however you want if you want orange flowers please put orange flowers in have an awesome day or whatever bye